The Archerwell Foundation of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex produced a short but impressive film this month that suggests the past year has been nothing short of a man. Harry and Meghan have previously waited until the new year to release a flashy impact film showcasing the good deeds of their philanthropic organization. But this year's offering, which is full of joyful smiles, group hugs, glitzy selfies, and a catchy soundtrack, only surfaced online a few hours after the Princess of Wales posted a sweet video of her and her three kids volunteering at Windsor Baby Bank, a non-profit that supports low-income families. A misfortune tale coincidence, maybe. However, the Sussexes have many reasons to try to generate some positive PR at the end of what has undoubtedly been a turbulent year for them both. What one could call their annus horribilis, not least of which is the news that Archer Well has seen a decline in annual donations of nearly $11 million, 8.6 million pounds. A public disclosure form that the charity filed with U.S. Tax officials this week shows that it has a $674,485, pounds deficit in 22. In 2022, it got $2 million, 1.6 million pound, from two anonymous donors, but it was insufficient to pay its $2.67 million, 2 million pounds expenses, which included gifts to various charitable organizations, and more than $425,000, $333,982 pounds for PR and strategic support. In a minute, more on the foundation's situation three years after its filing. Additionally, there will be more fallout from the release of Endgame, the contentious biography penned by a journalist acquainted with the merit. And more about Meghan's passable plans after spotting her in a commercial for her friend's coffee business. Let's go back to the Art Shawell video release, which was followed by the couple's Christmas card featuring them grinning at the Invictus Games closing ceremony last year. This event corresponded with Harry and Meghan's inclusion on the Hollywood Reporter's list of the biggest losers of 2023. Using its brutally honest rundown of who had the best and worst year in entertainment to its advantage, the Bible of the film industry attributed the pair's ranking among the top 11 to their whiny Netflix documentary, whiny biography, and an inert podcast. It also stated that the Harry and Meghan brand swelled into a sanctimonious bubble just begging to be popped, and that they had fled a life of ceremonial public service to cash in on their celebrity status in the States. Given that Megxit will turn four this month, and that the pair chose to leave the UK to pursue a life of service in California, is it possible that Hollywood has lost interest in I believe that they are currently in a vulnerable situation, says Nick Eid, a brand and culture specialist who previously collaborated with Meghan in London 10 years ago. It seems like they've lost their way in terms of who they are and what their actual purpose is, said the person who collected millions of dollars from companies like Netflix and Spotify after Megxit. Aid believes that the couple has been isolated by a never-ending string of events, including the release of Harry's book Spare in January, absurd allegations of a near-catastrophic car chase in New York in May, and the ongoing controversy over royal racism following the release of Omid's Cobbies and Game. Aid continues, they are in dangerous territory. They've put themselves in a really difficult situation where people may have lost trust in them, and trust is one of the most crucial things any brand, charity, or individual needs. Maybe they've isolated themselves because they don't trust anyone, but I think it's largely because people don't want to be associated with them and don't want their brands to be tarnished. Now, back to Archer Well, which seems to have had mixed luck over the past year, despite the heartwarming video this week. It's interesting to look at the numbers on its income tax form for 20T. The most notable thing is how much less money was donated than in previous years. The foundation received $10 million, 7.8 million pounds, and $3 million, 2.4 million pounds from two anonymous contributors in 2021, but the only significant donors gave $1 million, 786,194 pounds each last year. The charity continues to have net assets of nearly $8.3 million, 6.5 million pounds, because of the substantial prior donation. The name of the most significant donor to Archwell in 2021 has been the subject of much speculation. 
via the Silicon Valley Community Foundation, a nonprofit organization that affluent philanthropists utilize to make tax-free gifts. The funds were transferred to the Cherry. While there have been rumors that Harry only gave Arch a well half of his alleged £20 million advance for spare, other reports claim Oprah Winfrey paid Harry in exchange for the couple's 2021 interview. However, she and the TV network CBS denied receiving cash at the time. More conjecture has surfaced regarding the donor. Mark Benioff, the wealthy internet entrepreneur, philanthropist, and publisher of Time magazine, which featured Harry and Meghan on its cover and listed them among its top 100 significant people in 2021. With their Archa Well Foundation, the Sussexes turned compassion into boots on the ground. The magazine complimented them at the time. But the Sussexes weren't worthy of a spot on the list in 2022 or 2023. Furthermore, last week Benioff declared, we are not involved in Archa Well. Employee-related costs increased dramatically from $163,085, $128,000 in 2021 to $640,441, $503,514 in 2022 as donations to Archa Well decline. For the hour a week that Harry and Meghan have documented as working for the foundation, they are not paid. In contrast, James Holt, the executive director of Archa Well and former head of communications for the Sussexes and Cambridges in London, received $207,405 in salary plus a $20,000 bonus. Additionally, the foundation paid outside advisors hundreds of thousands of dollars. Former Hillary Clinton adviser Genevieve Roth got $180,524, $141,926 pounds through her business, Invisible Hand. Hurley Lauren, a company led by former Palisades Beth Hurley and Clara Lauren, received $127,807, $100,412 in 2021 pounds while online harms researcher Giore Craig received $120,000, £94,343. Archa Well awarded gifts to social justice organizations, particularly those that combat racial and gender inequality, amid scores of charity contribution. A play place for kids in Uvalde, Texas, where a school shooting in May of last year claimed the lives of 19 pupils and two instructors, was made passable by a donation of $165,000, £129,722, an additional £78,619, or $100,000, was donated to the Halo Trust, a mine-clearing organization backed by Diana, Princess of Wales. The National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, NAACP, a civil rights organization, likewise received $125,000, £98,274, to support the Archa Well Foundation Digital Civil Rights Award, just like in 2021. The biggest quandary is who Meghan and Harry are, claims Nick Eade, but Archa Well has quite a big war chest, which enables it to fund various things. What is their true aim, after all? Is the purpose of criticism of the royal family or philanthropy, since one draws attention away from the other? For their former royal highnesses, the past year has undoubtedly been tumultuous, with concerns that their personal tragedies may eclipse their philanthropic endeavors. Aid claims that it's been damage after damage to their reputation. January saw the release of Harry's memoir, Spare, which in just one week sold over 3.2 million copies worldwide. Since then, not a month in 2023 has gone by without turmoil. Harry was criticized for a number of its disclosures, including his assertion that he had killed 25 Taliban in Afghanistan and his claim that Prince William had pushed him to the ground after a dispute with Meghan. The creators of the animated American television series South Park mocked a couple in February by making fun of their choice to retire as senior royal family members. The dumb and stupid Prince of Canada and his spouse were seen promoting their buck and demanding privacy on the Worldwide Privacy Tour episode. A Florida judge dismissed Meghan's half-sister Samantha Markle's defamation complaint in March, citing remarks made in the couple's 2021 CBS Oprah Winfrey interview and in the biography Finding Freen. However, a fresh complaint was submitted last month, 
and November 2024 is the scheduled try late. The Sussexes were made fun of in May following what they described as a near-catastrophic car chase through the congested streets of New York. The city police and photographers present contested their assertion that they were the target of a relentless pursuit by paparazzi for more than two hours. I don't suppose I'd call it a chase, the cab driver stated. Mitchell Jackson, a celebrity publicist, provided a scathing assessment. People feel like they're unreliable and melodramatic after the whole car chase thing in New York, and it's just going to revolve around them, and they will distract from what they're trying to promote. After just one season, Megan's Archetypes podcast was discontinued by Spotify in June. Harry's proposals, which included interviews with the Pope and Vladimir Putin about childhood trauma, were reportedly met with less than enthusiastic reception by the Cummy. Following the termination of the $20 million, 15.7 million pounds, multi-year contract, Bill Simmons, the company's head of podcast innovation and monetization, referred to the two as F asterisk 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 king grifters. Jeremy Zimmer, the CEO of United Talent Agency, stated, It seems that Meghan Markle lacked any kind of talent, let alone exceptional audio talent. Being well-known alone does not equate to skill or brilliance. Although the couple signed a five-year, $100 million, 78.6 million pounds, Netflix deal in 2020, all that has come out of it is a six-part series called Harry and Meghan and a one-off documentary called Heart of Invictus from Harry. When a Dutch translation of Omid Scobie's bookend game accidentally named King Charles and the Princess of Wales as the two family members who allegedly discussed the skin color of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex's unborn child, it sparked a new controversy in November about allegations of racism within the royal family. The book was quickly removed from bookshops. Although Scobie has denied being Meg's pal and the Sussexes have disassociated themselves from the book, the Duchess previously sent briefing notes to an assistant to help the author with Finding Freedom, his biography of her. One of the most seasoned crisis managers in Britain, Mark Burkowski, claimed that the book had backfired spectacularly for the Sussexes and that Meghan's ambitions for a Hollywood relaunch were clearly not working despite multiple red carpet appearances. In April, much hype accompanied the announcement of her signing to William Morris Endeavour, WME, a talent agency. No significant agreements have been reached since then. WME is reportedly exasperated by a never-ending scandal and horrified by Omid Scobie's new book, which might take a wrecking ball to the Sussex's future plans. The Mail got in touch with the agency this week to find out if rumors that Meghan would be let go by it were accurate. There was no response. Her choice to appear in a 30-second commercial for her friend's coffee company, Clever Blends, this week as an intern, her first acting appearance since 2017 does, however, seem to indicate that she has no intention of going away. According to U.S. Weekly quoted sources, the pair is hopeful that 2024 would be the year of Redan. Without a question, the upcoming year will be significant for the Sussexes and the development of their brand. According to Nick Eade, the two need to craft a strategy as to who they are and what their objective is. In the bigger picture, they're just not that big in Hollywood, where you have the likes of the Kardashians, the Cloonies, and Katy Perry, the speaker continued. They haven't demonstrated their value. They have not written screenplays, won Oscars, or received Emmys. They believe their fame is deserved, although they have done nothing to merit. This is the main issue at hand.